Okay, hi everyone, what a Monday. Boy, one thing after another today. Um, this is, you know, this is what I signed up for, uh, dealing with drama and problems in real estate. I mean, it's not the first time and it's definitely not gonna be the last time that I deal with problems that I didn't see coming. Uh, so here's gonna be a little story about how my Monday morning's going with regard to real estate. Uh, about a little over a week ago, uh, let me back up. I'm not going to go with names because I don't need to tell anyone's uh, names. If you're my client, you'll see this and you'll know it's about you, but I'm not going to mention your name. Let's just say I, I was hired to sell a home in Roy. <clears throat> really nice home. Rambler, fully finished. Nice home. And of course, we started listing this home right as the market started shifting. So it's taken us a lot longer than we thought to get it sold. You know, I explained it up front that it's going to be a little bit different than it was last time, and they understood. So, we finally got an offer. So, I, that made sense. So, before I go under contract, I always fill out the agent and I fill out the lender. Because what some people don't understand is I never meet the buyers. If, if, I have, if I'm a listing agent, I don't meet the buyers. I still re I represent my sellers. I don't know who the buyers are unless I do a limited agency, but in this situation, it was not limited, which means they have the buyers have their own agent, their own lender, and I just ne navigate through that. Well, I get the offer. I call the lender immediately and just, just to make sure everything's good. You know, a lot of lenders out there nowadays just run and, and do pre-qualification letters like they change their underwear and they don't really vet their buyers that well. And I, I hate when that happens. So as the seller's agent, there's only so much I can do to vet the buyer that I know nothing about, right? So I called the lender, had a full conversation. Are you, um, have you ver verified your client? Have you checked credit, income, debts? Uh, you know, just normal conversation that I've had hundreds of times. And of course, like most times, the lenders told me what I wanted to hear. Like, yep, fully checked, vetted, verified, uh, already out of underwriting, this should be a slam dunk. Okay, you know, I mean, what more can I really get? I got their approval letter, I, I got a conversation with the lender under the belt, under my belt, so okay. Talk to the agent, agent says the same thing. Yeah, my buyer's ready to go. They've been looking at homes for a long time and this is the first one that they both agreed on, husband and wife. They're good to go. We're gonna jump on things right away. Great. So we go over the offer, we get, we get it under contract and literally like day one, this buyer, uh, the lender ordered the appraisal. I'm like, Great, the home is super clean. So I didn't expect to have any issues with an inspection or anything, but right away, appraisal happened. Uh, like, great. It was like a 35 day contract, which is pretty standard. Appraisal was done right away. Thing was going well. I mean, now let's fast forward three weeks. Appraisal came in for high enough, no issue there. No problems that came in during the process. Uh, they went and looked at the home a few times. Everything was great. Well, in the meantime, while we're going through this, my clients are out of state looking at another home because they're, they're relocating. So they find a home they love. They tell their agent in another state that uh, their home's being listed. It's, it's under contract. Uh, this is our agent, call them. Cause I always have to navigate dates and whatnot with other agents. So their agent calls me, we had a good conversation. And of course she asked me the questions like, uh, how do you feel about the buyer? Do you feel that they're reliable? And I said, so far, I mean, there is nothing that concerned me up to this point. They, usually people won't order the appraisal if there's an issue. So once the appraisal was done, I felt like it was looking pretty good. So I said, no, we're good. I mean, relatively speaking, for what I knew, right? She said, great. So they get under contract on this home out of state. Those sellers get under contract on another home out of state. So we now have a domino. So I think four, four homes, four or five homes and we are domino number uno, one. So of course, everything revolves around me. 
nothing's going to happen unless we get to the closing table because then it just dominoes. This one closes, then they buy, then the sellers sell, then the sellers buy a new home, then those sellers sell. I mean, literally, it's just a domino. Very normal. We do it all the time. Most I've ever done it once is like 15, which is insane. Um, we're good. Okay. So I went on my cruise last week. And so right before I left, I always like to be at my closings if I can. It's just super important to me to make sure that there's no issues or problems. So we set this closing before I left the day before and we closed. Everything was great. You know, the sellers were getting what they needed. They're transferring the, the proceeds to the out-of-state title company. <clears throat> Everything was going just like we wanted to. At this point, everything was checked off. Like I, right before I left on my cruise, I, I contacted every agent that I'm under contract with to make sure that everything's good and there's nothing that I need to, to know, right? Because even though I have my phone on a cruise, it's not like super immediate response. So I wanted to make sure everything was good. Once again, agent said, we're good, everything's fine. So I let my sellers know, I get on my cruise, Towards the last day of my cruise, which was Friday, Thursday, everything starts unraveling. And the buyers are now asking for an extension. The first question I have is, why are you asking for an extension? You guys did the appraisal a month ago. The appraisal came in fine. What What is the extension for? And uh, all the agent could tell me is, the buyer needs a little bit more money for his down payment. He didn't expect that he would need so much to bring to closing, which was really a, a red flag to me because I never help, every buyer that I help knows what to expect at closing. This lender should have made this way more obvious to this buyer. And I said, how short are we? She won't tell me. I mean, there's some things that she, agents will share and other things they won't. I'm like, okay, whatever. She's like, we only need an extension till Monday. This was Thursday just barely, like four days ago. Uh, talked to my sellers. Uh, I just said, look, I, you know, they just need an extension till Monday and everything looks pretty good from what I know. This is what they said. They're just collecting their final down payment. And they said, okay, they're stressed, rightfully so. They go to their agent out of state. They extend their dates. Then those sellers extend their dates on the home they're buying. Then those sellers extend dates. So literally, we're the domino of the first piece of the domino. We get it all done. Granted, I was on my cruise. I had my assistant involved. We were all handling it the best we could. Well, Saturday comes around. I'm back in town. I talked to the lender and I said, are you good for Monday? No, I don't think so. We're probably gonna need more time. I said, okay, you're not telling me everything what's going on. I need to know. I, I have four families or five families involved. What is going on? I need to know. And the lender's just, she's not being truthful. And it's hard because I can only go off of what they tell me, right? So I said, we're not gonna give you more time until we know the plan, what's going on. And, and what the lender told me was, he's just short on his down payment still. He's gonna get it from family, they're gonna gift it to him, then we can close. And I said, is everything else done? They're like, yeah. The closing disclosure was signed and acknowledged. The underwriting is all done. All the conditions are met. We're good. We're just short money. Okay, how much? <laughs> I felt like I needed to know in this situation. Legally, they don't have to tell me, but morally, they should, right? She won't tell me still. So they said, just extend it to the 12th, which is insane. It was like almost oh, what, a week and a half, but we should still be able to close Monday. And I just didn't feel good about that because I, up to this point, I feel like they've been holding information from me. But now come to Monday morning, I'm driving, trying to work this out. My tire blows on my Tesla. I go into Les Schwab. I'm trying to deal with this. And now the agent's calling me out of state, wanting to know why we haven't signed or uh, closed. And I just, I can only be honest, right? I can only say the truth of how I know what my truth is. So I explained all this, just like I am in this video. I'm like, look, everything was done right. And the agent really got upset with me. And I was talking to the agent. Now, once again, I'm not trying to make excuses. I, I'm a guy, if you know me, I don't make excuses for anything. I own my life and I own every decision I make. And I said, look, I said, I'm so sorry. This is just agent talk. 
I said, I'm so sorry. There's nothing I could have done differently. In this situation, there's nothing I could have done differently. The other agent said, I disagree with that. And then all of a sudden, now the agent's attacking my character and reputation. I said, oh no. <laughs> I said, we're not going there. There is nothing I could have done differently. And she's like, no, there was, and you should have done it. And I said, okay. I said, I'm gonna tell you the story of what I just told you guys. I vetted them. I get the offer, I call the agent, I call the lender. You could be 95% confident that a transaction's gonna close, but there's still a window there, whether it's 5%, 50%, however you wanna do it, there's still a window of uncertainty. Nothing's 100%. I mean, I have so many stories I can go into right now, which I won't. Nothing is 100%. As an agent, as a listing agent, I have to mutually respect what another agent is telling me. Just, it's what I do. There's no way that I could have done anything different in this situation than what I did. And I, that's what I tried to explain to this other agent on the phone. I says, what in the world could I have done differently? Now, if I represented the buyer, sure, it'd be my lender, it'd be my, my people, I would have known there was a problem right away. But I said, in this situation, when I'm not representing these buyers, how would I have done anything different? I said, I have to take what people tell me at face value sometimes. Because there's, you know, of course, they could tell me anything they want. But hopefully as professionals in this industry, they will tell me the truth. And that's all I could go off of. So... Remember, when I vetted them, they're ready to go. Everything's checked off. We're good to go. So the agent was not happy with me, clearly. It still blames me as if I could have known, had some magic eight ball or something, or could have seen the future. There's no way for me to know. There's that level of uncertainty and that gray area and the unknown area that absolutely can happen when you buy or sell real estate. There's nothing that's 100%. I don't care if you are a cash buyer with a signed contract with non-refundable earnest money. I've seen it and they still doesn't happen. So nothing's 100%. You just have to have a little faith that people are telling you the truth. So that's where we are right now. And my phone is blowing up because all these agents out of state are going to the source of the problem, which is clearly me. I'm the listing agent on the very first domino and I'm trying to explain, like, I'm not trying to pass guilt by any means. Like I said, if I make a mistake, I will own that mistake. And I will just stand proud and say why I did what I did. But in this situation, I truly don't believe I made a mistake or could have done anything different to, to foresee the future. So I don't know what's going to happen. I'm trying to find a plan B, C, and D. I got a heated conversation with the lender. She does not like me very much right now. Uh, and I just said... you you need to talk to me. You need to tell me. How much is your buyer short? Are we talking three grand? Are we talking five grand? Are we talking 20 grand? I need to know how far he's short. And she's not telling me. And I don't know if that's because there's another issue and they're using this as an excuse. And she knows that maybe if they are only short a few grand that we'll just fix it. I don't know what to believe is the problem. And all I know right now, it's at 1230. And we're supposed to be funding and recording today. All I know is, once again, what I'm being told. I'm going right to the source. I, I bypassed the agent. And the, the loan officer is not telling me what they're short. All she's telling me is they're short. And they're waiting for gift funds. That's something that we can fix. Like, we can fix this. But she's not giving me the opportunity to. I'm very good at finding ways to, to bring people together. I'm very good at that and they're not giving me an opportunity to. So because of that, I am gonna put a little blame on them. Because of that, this could all come crumbling down and fall apart. Sure, my seller's gonna get the earnest money from the buyer. We don't want it. We don't want the earnest money. We just want to sell their home so that all these four or five families can get moving. So I don't know what's going on. This is my rant with real estate. I love my job. I'm very good at finding multiple options and different plans to make things work as long as I'm being told the truth. And I feel like at this point in time, I haven't been told the truth from anyone on the other side. And now this other agent in another state saying that, you know, 
my brokerage needs to get involved and like the brokerage needs to make it right and all these things. And I just told her, I says, you don't understand. We did nothing wrong. Like there's nothing we could have done differently. There's nothing my brokerage could have done differently. I know how this system works. And it just came up to the 5% unknown area that people are telling me the truth. So I feel so bad for my sellers. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know if this is all gonna come crumbling down and we're gonna have to find a new buyer and they're gonna lose this home and then have to find another home out of state. I don't know. But all I know right now is I feel so bad for my people and I'm trying to find a way to fix it. And nobody is communicating with me and nobody is telling me what I have to do to come up with options. And the only person that can do that right now is this buyer's lender. That's the only one that can help me find an option. And she's not giving me the info I'm asking for. So I don't know. I don't think it's an issue now of being short on money. I feel like that's just a scapegoat. Because if it was, that would be so easy to fix. Between me, the other agent, the sellers, we would fix it. We'd fix it in 10 minutes. So this is the part of my job that I cannot stand because I literally did everything legally and morally right to my best of my ability. And not to toot my own horn, but I'm really good at what I do. And when things like this happen, it's so unfair. It's so unfair to my clients because it's my job to make sure these things don't happen. But no matter what you do, you still have to rely on other people to do the right thing. And that's what always comes back and bites me. So please, like, understand that as agents, if you feel like your agent's not taking care of you, or your agent's not doing something to make the deal happen, please know that sometimes it's nothing your agent could have done differently. And hopefully you have a good enough relationship and trust between you both that you tell each other the truth and you trust each other. And that's all I do. I, I don't, I don't play games and I don't beat around the bush. I wish this would have ended differently. I think it's going to come crashing down and I truly don't believe I'll get any type of answer of what actually really happened to this buyer and a super unfair and a super unfair to multiple families that were all packed up and ready and living in a hotel. And it just sucks that I was the very first domino. So that's my Monday morning for you all. And uh, I feel terrible. I'm just sitting here driving to Salt Lake and uh, it's on my mind. Obviously I, I replayed it 50 different ways and I don't know what I could have done differently. And the problem is the results all people know is it didn't happen and uh, it just comes down to honesty and just be honest in your professional and your personal life just be honest because there's so much more at play than just you there's other families there's other career changes there's other agents, lenders, title companies, inspectors, appraisers. And there's so many people involved in a, you know, half a million or more dollar purchase or hundred thousand dollar purchase. It doesn't matter the purchase amount. There's so many people involved that are good, honest, hardworking people. And nobody deserves, none of them deserve to have this happen to them. So the only way this could have been handled differently is if we would have known a week and a half ago that something wasn't right which they should have picked up the phone and called me right away. I feel like whatever's happened, they're trying to just fix it amongst themselves and not truly explain what's going on to the other side. And that just leaves me in the unknown. I'm just in the abyss here waiting to hear something. When, when what they should have done is seen an issue, a red flag popped up with a buyer or something clearly happened. And they should have picked up the phone and called me or sent me a text and said, we need to talk. Because maybe if they would have done this two weeks ago, we could have fixed this by now and everybody could have closed today. But when people try to just keep everything to themselves and they don't share information, things like this happen. So it's a tough day for me. It's been super shitty and I, I feel so bad for my, my clients. 
I love them so much. They're such good people. They don't deserve this. And uh, I hope we can find an option that works. I really do. Without actually relisting the home and starting over. But from what I can tell, it might end up that way. Because nobody is communicating with me. And because of that, I can't try to fix something. I don't know what the problem is. So, hope you all have a better uh, Monday than I have. I know it's just a, you know, this is a part of the job that I deal with a lot. But I shouldn't have to. Because people should be honest. So, I will keep you all updated if we get this fixed for them with this home. I hope we can. And uh, I definitely know one lender right now that I will never recommend. <laughs> That's for sure. I can't stand when people just tell people what they want to hear and not the truth. It always comes back to bite you. It will always come back if you're trying to hide something. So, peace.